right apologies i've just been bashing on with a load of stuff just cleaning up parts refurbing them so we've got like the oil filter housing there the starter motors all been repainted i'm gonna I, i've obviously cleaned up this bendix but it, it wants a bit of lubrication before it goes back in because it's a little bit sticky um obviously cleaning off the fan the radiator the radiator wasn't leaking although it looks a bit minging to be honest i have i've steam cleaned this radiator to get all the debris and dirt out between the fins i'll talk about that in a little bit more in a little bit more in a moment one thing i did want to talk about so i'm actually after a bit of advice here if anyone knows so this is uh the bolt for the oil filter and what actually happens so let me think actually so <clears throat> All of that bit, all of this end, sits inside the filter canister and this uh, washer and obviously the, the bolt at the top sits outside. There's an oil seal in there and then this bit at the end goes up against the filter and when that's inside the filter it's spring loaded so it holds the filter in place. Now at the bottom here is a tiny little clip and that clip I think just stops all this falling off the end when you're changing the filter but this clip looks really really loose and I'm actually worried about putting it back in because it is literally just a round sort of circlip like that and that basically stops all of this coming off so it just holds it in place so it's, I don't think it's not actually needed when the engine's running or anything like that it's really I think just for their for when you're fiddling around changing the filter to stop it all coming off the end. But I'm a little bit worried about that sort of breaking up or coming off inside. I suppose it can't come off really. I don't know, I'm in two minds. I'm almost inclined just to leave that off because it doesn't really serve a purpose. It only serves a purpose to stop it all falling off the end and it's a bit of peace of mind. Let me know what you think, obviously. This will probably go out before I've had a chance to put all that back together anyway. So someone in the know might say, oh yeah, yeah, take them out. Yep, yeah, they've had problems with them in the past. Next thing, uh, I mentioned the radiator. So it looks a bit minging, but it is, it's not leaking anywhere. Obviously got some old oxidization down the bottom here and at the top where it's had, you know, just a bit of coolant leaking, I guess. Um, the one thing that is quite important, you'll see this area here, hopefully it shows up all right on the camera. It's got this bit here, which, um, yeah, is, is reasonable. I mean, that's probably only, what's that, a tenth of the radiator. All the fins are bent over. They're bent over sort of at a 90 degree angle. Now that means for that bit of the radiator there, air can't flow through there, so it's ineffective. It won't be cooling very well. This radiator is not actually in bad nick. You see some of them where they're beat up really badly and all the fins are bent. Um, don't have to worry about it too much on minis, but when cars have front-mounted radiators, obviously they get full of uh, bugs and bees and flies and things like that, and they can block up. So I think if you can see light through there, that's good. You want to see light all the way through. This area here that's damaged, really, I, I, I want that to have good airflow so I'm actually just gonna by hand um, bend those carefully bend all these fins back and you can do this but you just got to be careful I think I seem to recall one time seeing like a comb like a metal comb you could get maybe I was imagining it maybe it was something in my sleep I'm sure you could get like a metal comb to almost comb the fins, but just one by one here, this is yeah quite easy to do. I'm just straightening these fins out so the radiator will cool more efficiently. Now this is a, um, I guess this is a like, copper core radiator. I don't think it would be as easy to do on an aluminium cord radiator. 
but I don't know, never tried it. There we go, literally a few minutes that, just to get them all straight again. And we'll get air throw through there now, so the radiator will be more efficient. And that's probably, it's just where someone's maybe moved the radiator around in the past. I might have even done it, taken it out actually. But anyway, that should do. I need to get this all cleaned up now. I'm kind of doing the reverse of what Alex Toon did with his car, so I'm cleaning up all the engine and the engine bay and then as an aside I'm doing the radiator Alex kind of done the reverse of that <laughs> right it's trivia time so I've got a little question for you let's have a little bit of a game do you know of any parts on a classic mini that are galvanized having a good think I, I can't believe this actually I never realized it did you guess right let's have a look so believe it or not the fan cowling is galvanized I don't know whether you can see that but that is definitely galvanized I never realized that before so there we go bit of mini trivia for you I don't know why they galvanized it it's a shame they didn't do the whole car because uh, it would be in as good a condition as that. Back in the day when I was much younger, but far more stupid, and I really didn't have two pennies to rub together, I daily drove minis for probably 10 years or so. And I literally had no spare money back then. All my money, spare money, went into petrol money to drive the car. And uh, yeah, I never had any money for styling mods or tuning and things like that. So you had to just do what you could do on a shoestring budget. One of the things I always used to do, and I discovered this on my first Mini, was if you rubbed the paint off the radiator and you used a bit of auto sole and wire wool, they would come up absolutely beautiful. Gleaming gold, brass, copper. They would look absolutely fantastic. I actually think it was probably when I was an apprentice and my mentor told me about it then. And I would spend many an hour on a Sunday afternoon polishing up the radiator, making it look amazing. Because when you lifted the bonnet, it looked brilliant. And it cost literally nothing to do. I think some people still do it nowadays, but for this purpose, I've just cleaned it off top and bottom because we're gonna paint the radiator. And we're not gonna go to the Alex Toon level of OCDs. We're just gonna wax and paint off this on this if we get a bit of dust and maybe the odd fly in the paint i'll probably put up with it but it just made me think when i was cleaning this off back to the simpler days you know when a sunday afternoon was all about doing what you can do for nothing you know making it go faster for nothing getting the timing spot on getting the points absolutely spot on and and you'd make a real difference to how the car went just by getting simple things like that right and you you could do stuff like this on the radiator. And I remember buying a new Mini, and uh, not a new Mini, a new classic Mini, and I was absolutely gutted because I lifted the bonnet and it had a plastic radiator on it, so I couldn't shine it up. But it just made me think back, what did you do back in the day? If you've owned Minis for a while, maybe back when times were simpler and you had less money, what was a little mod you could do for free? So the radiator is all painted. Hopefully you can see, that looks absolutely awesome. There's no flies in my radiator, Alex. 
Uh, and it's actually gone quite nice because remember I had that Hammerite Smooth Right paint that wasn't sat in, so I ordered some more paint. So the radiator I've done in satin black and the actual cowling is in, it, it's not gloss Hammerite, it's like gunmetal, black gunmetal. It's got slight metallic in it, but that hopefully, I will show you on the car, that's looking really good. I'm really pleased with that. I thought I'd share a couple of other things while I'm there, here. So, uh, first off, look at this, 16.9 degrees in the evening. Oh, it's been fantastic today. It's probably the hottest day of the year so far, 23 degrees. I actually went out and had a game of golf earlier, really enjoyed it. It was uh, end of lockdown for the UK on Monday, so I'm filming this on Tuesday. So when I had a game of golf, it almost felt like the world was back to normal again. I also got a package, uh, international. Uh, it has come from, it's come from Paul Hickey at Hickey Race Engineering. I, I don't know why he just didn't use a helium bloom. I mean, God knows how much it cost him to post this, but I found it was 11 euros. I've got to be honest, I just found Helium Blooms. They're much cheaper uh, and they get there quicker as well. So I've got my wheel nuts back now for the Hillman Imp wheels and the hubcap. So I'll be doing a bit on that in a future episode. Um, yeah, I have the perfect nuts now and uh, my nuts have been handled by Paul Hickey and I wouldn't trust my nuts with anyone else to be fair. Uh, I also went down one of those rabbit holes the other day. So I needed to... Well, I've got one of these butane propane mix go gas. Um, well, it's not a blowtorch, it just sort of warms things to death. Uh, if you want to get a broken nut or bolt off, you put that on there for about half hour and eventually it start, starts to glow slightly red and uh, it makes things a little bit easier to get off. But I see Mark's got a proper plumber's one and I'm always jealous of his. So, I've done the usual, I've gone on eBay and I thought, right, I'll just buy, I'll buy a slightly better one. But of course you go on there and uh, after five minutes worth of research, I've decided that I must have map gas and uh, the Rothenberger Spitfire, sorry, Superfire 2 is an absolute must have. It is like, it gets rave reviews. Um, yesterday, I didn't even know what a Rothenberger Sp Superfire 2 was, but today, I have to have one in my life. So uh, yes, we've got the Rothenberger Superfire 2. I thought I'd try a quick experiment actually. This thing is awesome. So this is map gas. I don't know what map gas is. You plumbers probably know if you're a plumber and you're watching this, but apparently it heats up to a higher temperature. In fact, it's propane, propene, and dimethyl ether mixture. Propane, propene, and dimethyl ether mixture. Uh, sounds like a bit of a cocktail, but yeah, we'll like the old cocktail now and again, but this uh, igniter I like that. And it's all adjustable as well. Thought I'd just try a quick experiment. We'll see how long this takes. So I've got two identical bolts here. Better, better plaid safe, haven't I? I wonder how long it will take before it glows red. Uh, should we turn some lights off? Might help, mightn't it? That is pretty quick to be fair. So that's cherry red. I thought I would, um, I've got another bolt there. I'll just try the old system. I might have to time lapse this because uh, it could take bloody ages. I might get bored and give up actually because this, it just takes forever. Let's see though, let's give it half a chance. 
as I say, I might time lapse this, so you'll have to trust me. There we go, not exactly a scientific experiment. I think it got to about the same amount of redness um, and it probably took four or five times as long. So yeah, I'm a big kid, ain't I? Um, right, let's put some lights back on. Let's uh, just put this radiator on just for a bit of battery shots and uh, I'm not gonna time lapse it. A radiator to put in is really easy bolt down the bottom there and put the top hose on first because that makes life a lot easier um can you guess the one mistake i made so when i put the head on i forgot to do something i'll give you a clue there's a big difference between a 1275 a plus and a 998 a plus and i've done lots of 1275s in the past i missed something when i put the head on can you guess what it was So as you can see, I've been quite busy. I've done loads of other stuff on the engine off camera as well. I've just got on with it just because it's boring, nitty gritty bits. It's cleaning up brackets and it's painting them and stuff like that. But can you remember, or did you guess right, what I forgot to put on when I put the head on? I'm sure you did guess. It was a bypass hose. Now, I didn't forget to put the bypass hose on. I did put it on. What I forgot to do was put the Jubilee clips on. And of course, I've talked down the head and everything like that. Luckily, what you can do, if you unscrew the Jubilee clips all the way, you can sort of unravel them. So I managed to unravel it, wrap it round, back round the hose and put them on. So um, yeah, rookie error there. But as I say, most of the time, I've done 1275s in the past. so. 998s obviously have that bypass hose. So the radiator is on now. I hope you'll agree that's looking absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm really pleased with how it's come out. I obviously still need to finish up a few bits. The top bracket's got to go on. I've ordered some new bushes for that. I've just placed a big order from Mini Spares. Every time I place an order, I think that's the last one. That is the last 200, 300, 400, 500 quid I'm going to order. I don't need to order anything else. And then the bits just add up. So I put in an order again the other day. And again, I think it's the last one, but you're never quite sure. Now, I've got to be careful. Is, is Paul Robinson watching this? Can someone let me know if he is? because I've ordered a brand new alternator just because I couldn't be asked to clean up the old one. <laughs> so yeah, I've ordered a brand new alternator. The old one was working fine, but it's quite a complicated piece to take apart, clean up and make it look right. A new alternator is 35 quid plus of that and there's no surcharge. So yeah, I'm going to go against Paul Robinson here. I just couldn't be bothered to clean up the alternator, so I've ordered a brand new one. Um, so that's on its way from Mini Spares. Um, 
the engine's pretty much ready to start up now, apart from the inlet carburetor and exhaust manifold. So I've ordered a brand new exhaust system. The old one was just a bit crusty and I need to overhaul the SU carburetor. So I need to get an overhaul kit from that for that. The rest of it pretty much is ready, I think. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. It's a bit of a strange one because we're doing some odd bits like radiators and yeah, I've done lots of bit of soft camera, but as you can see, it's all coming together really nicely now. I've actually got a few days off work now. So between fitting in a few um, rounds of golf, hopefully I can get some more of the car done. And if the bits turned up next video, I don't know, we might be doing a carburetor, but we're not far off having it running again now.